Mm. Okay, uh, hello friends. Uh, my name is Konstantin, shortly Kostas. I am a Perl backend developer at multisave.com. Uh, multisafepay.com. Uh, also, I'm working on uh, decentralized uh, systems with embedded devices. Uh, it's IO devices, uh, some devices with specific mission. And uh, as a hobby, I have to work with Raku and uh, Metallic importing modules, uh, for example, some modules from testing, some modules from uh, compressing, etc. And today we will speak about uh, blockchain technologies and uh, blockchain technology in the prison of Oracle. Uh, okay, we will start from uh, uh, what is a content management system at all? Uh, of course, we, uh, as you know, I think everybody of you know that uh, every website, uh, there, there is no static websites today. There are dynamic sites, websites, and every site is uh, driven, is run by a content management system. Of course, uh, we know that uh, these uh, systems uh, have a few features. Uh, for example, uh, they have different layers of presentation or administration. They have different editors. They have scalability or exploitability features. We are modules, modules on something other. And of course, we know that uh, there are legacy content management systems, uh, the couplet, a headless architecture of uh, this content management system. And when we're speaking about how to create, how to do, how to deal with content management system, we should think about the ar architecture. And uh, uh, Perl 6 Oracle uh, ecosystem has uh, has a few uh, well-known content management system uh, that were developed a few years ago that's not maintained yet and uh, developed as a system under the active development. Uh, on the slide, you see that uh, it's not a big number of systems, but uh, they all well known in a community and they all are uh, used uh, has a use cases. I should uh, mention that CRO, it's not a content management system, it's a uh, library, it's a framework. And I uh, should mention uh, Bellador, it's a, uh, I think uh, some kind of dancer of Perl 5 dancer in Oracle. Um, what, uh, when we're speaking about, uh, when we're talking about the uh, benefits uh, of uh, content management, management systems, same as is on blockchain. Of course, we should speak about the privacy and security at first step. And second, uh, reliability. Uh, and of course, it's decentralization. In the slide, a few more uh, features and a few more benefits, but this three is a main, this three is general. Um, of course, uh, the features of blockchain and the features to, of using blockchain in the management and content management, it's, a, it's a, that when, you, you, when you're on blockchain, you can track all uh, changes, all for data sets uh, that store it on blockchain. Uh, you could track any, um, not track, you could uh, manage accounts of the uh, users that connecting, that interacting with your management system. And of course, uh, there are a few restrictions like um, uh, when you're using blockchain, you, when, when you want to store data on blockchain, you need a smart contracts uh, support. Not all blockchains, but mostly uh, a big amount of them, a big quantity of them are supporting smart contracts. But uh, where in this, in this talk, I will speak about Ethereum. It's a uh, blockchain technology with a smart contract support. Okay, uh, the next thing where we'll, we will uh, talk about, we'll discuss it's uh, how, uh, uh, of course, in the prism of content management system, how Raku dealing with uh, World Wide Web, what features, what things, and what um, special, what special modules Raku have uh, inside or built in for interacting with World Wide Web. Uh, of course, uh, the first and the very simple thing is a CGI. Uh, CGI is very old and uh, 
it's not require have uh, it hasn't any requirements any specific requirements for using uh, you need to support input standard input and standard output streams to interact with uh, any web server uh, and CGI is a way is, is the simplest way to bring Reku into World Wide Web. For example, uh, uh, the uh, November's Wiki, as you see the link on the slide, is it, it, it is the oldest uh, web 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 application in Raku in Perl six. Uh, it has a own CGI library and CGI library. What 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 it? Uh, wh why we do need CGI library? We should to interact with worldwide web. We interact with HTTP. We need to parse headers to create responses to create requests. And CGI, uh, as you know, Perl five CGI PM. It's very useful to use it. Uh, and the member has built in something some. Some some implementation of CGI. Of course, common gateway interface is old. And the next thing, what we uh, deal with is the next generation is a fast CGI. We have a fast CGI native call module that provides uh, native calls to Apache mod CGI. Uh, I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly the name of the module of Apache module, but it uh, but this. Package record package provides uh, native calls to this module, and you using the fast CGI, you skipping, uh, not skipping for the first time, but skipping the next uh, on, on the next request, you're skipping the initialization of your script. You skipping uh, the first stage of uh, creating object of uh, environment of initializing environment, and that's why your script becoming faster. Uh, so it's a great uh, when using CGI. It's a great thing to migrate from fast CGI. It's a great thing to migrate uh, start point to migrate from older CGI of traditional CGI to uh, fast to speed up your application with minimal changes. Uh, the next thing uh, I know uh, I think you know the plug. It's um, in Perl five plug. It's uh, uh, like a super glue interface uh, to connect any web server to any framework uh, with a simple specification with with, with a simple uh, with, with a simple protocol of interacting in interactive or exchanging data. In Perl uh, six in Iraq we have um, port crust. It's a port of Black Perl six, but with specific uh, lang language specific things like uh, OOP uh, and, and, and etc. And when we use uh, Crust, when we think to use RCGI, like it's uh, named Raku Superglue interface, we will uh, think about Raku VP, Raku Web AP, Web AP for Raku. It's a specification how to interact to web server, how to interact to uh, framework and uh, the specific things, but in a common way, RCGI works uh, like uh, environment passes like uh, in a simple, in a traditional fast CGI, like an end variable. Then RCGI up is a subroutine code or a callable class, but it's not sub uh, but it's not simple subroutine like a Perl 5. It's a Mm, it, it should it, it should stay it, it should uh, stored in a special file with a special name. So there is a, a, a few tips and tricks uh, in this in, in, in Rock implementation. And when your application is uh, running, when it's uh, returning its uh, return value, it's like an array of HTTP status headers and response body. That's all. And uh, the four things is across services because uh, it's not a web technology. It's not, it's not a web technology like a uh, fast CGI, CGI or CGI, but it's a framework with a own web server. It uh, has own uh, things to interact with clients, uh, has uh, different, uh, a set of libraries for building reactive distributing web systems, 
uh, has a Moscow URL router client, uh, as I say, HTTP server, but in, in, in all it uh, full of uh, isolated models. For example, when you use, when, when you think to use um, HTTP server and router, you need to install uh, core, of course, core, it's about 20 models and HTTP, it's about uh, 60 models and it, it, at all, it's, it's a great quantity over uh, 80 models for HTTP server and router. So Crow, it's great for a fast start. It's absolutely efficient to quick start, but many dependencies and it's uh, maybe you don't need all this providing by Crow. Uh, and uh, in, in terms of uh, web protocols and things to create web application, uh, to create fast and speed, speed up, boosted uh, web application. Of course, I should speak about uh, the profiling code. Of course, we, we should need fast technologies. We should need uh, special things to increase our speed, but our code, but fast code working, running faster than slow code. Okay, and uh, when you running the profiling, where you profiler, when you were uh, profiling your code, you uh, finding the bottlenecks and uh, try to reward them. So before migrating to any of the technologies spoken about, uh, I will recommend to profile a code. Okay, that's uh, a few excursions into Raco and VVV. Okay, the next is uh, how blockchain uh, deals with VVV. In uh, today, we're focusing on three aspects of any web application, of any web page, and uh, of any web service. The three aspects: it's of uh, of user experience, of course, aspects. It's uh, loading, interactivity, and visual stability. Um, LCP, FID, and CLS. And on the slide, we have a uh, three calls of the limits so where we have a good application or where we need improvements, or we have a proven uh, application. For example, when your page loading over four seconds, your application is poor because the visitor, or maybe you think that it's uh, site not working, maybe it's under maintenance or something other, and he leave it. When your interactivity very, so when your interactivity is slow, I mean a fair FID uh, aspect, uh, your page like, uh, 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 there isn't any ha chaos on your ca uh, case on your page. For example, any blocks are uh, flashing, some block are loaded, some block are um, faded out or something else because un un unstable uh, connectivity, unstable connection, or uh, uh, that's due to the uh, poor code, poor client co code on your page. And cumulative layout shift, it's when, uh, uh, okay, it's, uh, it's a thing when you, the page uses asynchronous uh, loading. For example, some block is loaded, banners, banner is loaded and the page uh, falls down. For example, bottom that was on the middle of the page, it drops in, 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 in a footer and you don't see it yet because big banner appear. Uh, the three hold, uh, they hold uh, shows what timings should your web page uh, perform to be well ranked, to be relevant, and not to be uh, bad for the users. Okay, and what's about blockchain? Ha! Huh. And um, on this case, blockchain means latency because every blockchain uh, technology appear uh, working with transaction. For example. In a private network uh, with a few nodes, uh, with the gas limits uh, or five million way, uh, we are running five second generation intervals for new blocks. It means when you push any transaction, data in blockchain will appear uh, in a few in, in in five minutes. And five minutes is a really it's it, it's a good it's it's a good period. There are a few more longer periods like a one minute or a. 15 minutes, 15 seconds. Um, uh, nevertheless, actually you got the actual data after uh, this period. Um, another thing is the cost of transactions because we, when we're storing some uh, small data, for example, integers, uh, for example, vote results or something, and other ratings, it's uh, not 
so costable. But when we storing texts, when we storing binary data, transaction cost uh, increases, and that's why uh, we don't we, we could not store one block of data in one transaction. We should create many transactions. Uh, block could not contain all of them. We need two blocks, three blocks, and that's also uh, causes the latency. Uh, about block interval, I said above. And in summary, we have front line latency from wrong generation, and the second line uh, latency from uh, something more complex, like uh, uh, data, like uh, hardware, network topology, or client setup. And as we see, our web application, our control management system, will perform two and a half seconds of loading time, floating period. And otherwise, the page will down ranking. Objectively, okay, objectively, we cannot perform the real time, uh, it, at least in real time. For example, we could not uh, output data from blockchain, for example, one megabyte data from blockchain, from blockchain in uh, two seconds. But we have a few techniques on reading, on to a few techniques uh, on writing, when we could mask this latency, we could unmask this lag. For example, laser loading, caching, caching, compressing or asynchronous writes. Uh, on client, asynchronous is uh, very simple to implement. We are JavaScript, we are promises object. It's working just fine in more, uh, very fine, very good in uh, modern browsers as well. Uh, in Raku, we have a much, uh, a much amount of uh, caching tools. If you prefer memcached, you have a you should use the special module. I working with Redis. Redis is great for me, and I using uh, the model for Redis for supporting Redis. Uh, also, I would I would try to I would I would uh, to speak about the Popius project. I don't know is it really maintain is it under maintenance, but it's a great project without any specific services. It's uh, working with a memory like uh, like a Redis maybe uh, caching. Uh, data in memory and loading it, prediction by time and other things. So it's great, yeah. And the thing I speak about before it's a compression. Uh, we have a LZV ReliNet model modulely with for text compression. For example, when you try to store text, it's a good idea to compress text before the storing on on, on blockchain. This module, I contributing this module, it's very, very simple, was ported from uh, more or less uh, efficient uh, the Welsh algorithm or from JavaScript. And it uh, saves about 20% 20, 20 of data on five kilobytes on text. It's, 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 it's uh, rather efficient for using in blockchain. Okay, uh, the next thing, uh, we know what the requirements for web, what's the requirements for CMSs, uh, what's requirements, uh, what we have in Raku to do, uh, what we have, what, what tools in Raku we have to creating uh, web pages, to creating uh, uh, blockchain tools or utilities, but we have a also, we have a modular. Modular. We have a net Ethereum modular to interact with Ethereum uh, from Raco application. Uh, uh, this modular was supported from Perl Perl five, uh, the same name, the same name net Ethereum from Perl five about uh, two years ago. Uh, I was a main contributor of this module, and now I is a main, main contributor. And uh, this module provides full stack of uh, function methods uh, and procedures to interact with Ethereum blockchain via uh, JSON RPC API. Here is the link to the open uh, repository. Uh, Net Ethereum communicates with pre installed Ethereum client on the same server uh, and Solidity compiler. Of course, you you, 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 if, if you cannot uh, pre-install compiler, you will work with a uh, pre-compiled smart contracts. And if you haven't uh, 
Ethereum client on this server, you could use a uh, remote client, but your network should be set up that uh, way that the requests or responses will go to the firewalls, routers, and something other. Uh, what the model for uh, for um, decentralized application uh, uh, in a common in, in, in a common we have a uh, four levels on the top level we have a rock application uh, then rock application uses net ethereum net ethereum working interacting with a blockchain client via ipc where json rpc and a blockchain client uh, interacting with a ledger with a low level blockchain with a smart contracts that are uh, storing on this blockchain uh, it's uh, uh, some kind of um, uh, the, the things are you are you have a smart contract you compiling it and you deploying in into the blockchain when you want to use a smart contract smart contract methods or smart contract features you should get uh, byte code from blockchain, push it to uh, Ethereum virtual machine running on blockchain client, and then got the results that also will be pushed it to blockchain or uh, it will be um, output like a response for a user. That's for model we would we should think, think about it every time we're working on blockchain. Uh, uh, I have said about a few words about smart contracts, but when we speaking about a control management system, we should implement something like regular database. We should have something like a new table, something like drop table, select, update, insert, remove. Uh, okay, all these features that could help us to interact. Oh, sorry. Google, hear me. Uh, uh, everything you, uh, you you should implement the everything you everything you prefer to interact with a regular database. And uh, in this case, we could use created pre-created pre-installed pre double Docker container with everything features you need. Uh, on this slide, you have a, a link to the Docker registry from where you can pull the container with a solidity with a um, client with a setup set, uh, set with uh, the network that's set up two for two local nodes and a few helper scripts a few smart con contract helpers uh, to run it on your workstation uh, inside docker uh, this repository contain uh, a few not not clear not very good Documentation, documentation, but it is, and you could try to use it at your projects. Uh, how to how we are accessing blockchain via smart contracts? Every smart contract uh, here is a JavaScript code. Every smart contract has an object. Uh, compiled smart contract contract has an object and function, and we can and we could call uh, the function of this uh, smart contract where object call. For example, we have a calls for a reading and transactions for a writing. In a top code, it's a simple read function with argument uh, that reads something from blockchain. And the second code will give us a writing function. It uh, performs the transactions. And arguments are not arguments for, for, for transaction, but arguments for a function. For example, for first argument, frq1, it's the first func where function argument. The second argument, frq2, is the second argument of where func. And the third uh, hash, third uh, couple of third, third um, couple is a uh, argument for a send transaction helper. That's in a common, common thing that, that things are. And in our module, when we using, when we try trying to create application level class, minimalistic application level class, we as use call and transaction uh, for call and transaction some universal Raku methods. For example, I prefer to create private methods like uh, read blockchain and write blockchain. Their methods have a few arguments. For example, method argument 
is a function name of a smart contract uh, or function uh, in a smart contract level. Data is a arguments to smart contract function uh, function and by takes is a block boolean that will be uh, uh, will performing uh, waiting for a mine for mining. For example, if you want to uh, wait for when transaction will be mining, you should set up this boolean. Uh, of course, inside this private methods, we have a course in, uh, for the Netetherium. Uh, Netetherium module provides uh, uh, API for interacting the blockchain, and we should use it. You could, uh, as as as, as uh, uh, we perform things below, you could try to um, show to see the code and to read the documentation. Maybe you find something interesting. Uh, for you, nevertheless, when you deploying, when, when you developing something uh, dependable on that Ethereum, you should know what API it provides and how we should use this API. Public methods uh, of our application level class, it's like a setter and getter. I uh, provide on, on the slide, I demonstrate uh, the simplest uh, setter and getter for Unsigned it into your data, and a few helpers uh, uh, as a interlacing, uh, checking is our blockchain node is available, uh, set contract address, for example, e helper and helper like a read integer is uh, in, in in this case it's uh, useful because from JSON we have. Uh, string, uh, stringified data, and uh, sometimes it's mm, cause errors, cause exceptions. So we need to type, we check type, and if it's not integer, create an integer type, like a call and int method on the value. Uh, and uh, the but, but a good idea to override constructor because uh, when you are creating an object of your of your application level class uh, after the creating you have a already built ethereum object to interact with the net ethereum apis but uh, maybe it's not a good idea to override a constructor and uh, in other case we can use state attribute state property sorry state property in our class and uh, initialize it on a first access, for example, this way, I think. Uh, okay, and summary, our rock application uh, have a input parameters. We should grab them and store them. Input parameters, it's a contract address in blockchain. Contract address is very, very useful because uh, Without it, we could not interact with smart contract. Then we need to create our up level, we create object of our up level class. In this case, I name it ATH minimalistic. Mm, never mind, maybe it could be, you, you could have another name. And also, we should make a simple steps of initialization. For example, check the node is available, check something. Uh, other, for example, is our contract is a hash or maybe hash, I mean, not hash like a language Raku or Perl5 hash. I mean, it's hash in the terms of blockchain. Uh, maybe we need some other testings. And the other and the last thing is a implementation of setter and getter. In other words, we should set or get value. And of course, it's dependable on our or the own type of our implementation. For example, if you're working, if, working, if you're implementing web, we should uh, handle the roads, handle the request types. For example, on post, we should set data, on get, we should uh, get, on get request, we should get data from blockchain and uh, push it back like a response. Uh, on console, we don't need, on console app, we don't need any web features like routing, just a common line arguments or something like that. Okay, and what 
gen generics the same as on blockchain should be. In this slide, I uh, uh, show the commonly known types of uh, same as architectures. Uh, I talk in small about on the first slides, but here it's a uh, more interesting picture. Uh, more interesting in what aspects? Every type, every architecture has a uh, backend. And when we using blockchain, when we're using distributed or decentralized network, we can deploy backend on each node of this network. And this, this great benefit of this is a uh, security level, is increasing the security level. Uh, what I'm what I talking about, for example, uh, every node, every Ethereum node have strict access. It uh, set up, a set, when we set up a node, we do many settings on policy, on access policy. We uh, do account, we're creating a called privileges. So uh, when we deploying backend on such node, we don't need to think about isolated uh, functionality about uh, isolation functionality of administra administration layer at backend. Uh, if we have privileges to read from blockchain, we will read. If we have no other privileges, we don't. We have no access, and we get nothing. Uh, another way, if we have privileges to creating transactions, we we'll can store data. Otherwise, our CMS is headless. It's headless in terms of modification. This node, and we have just read-only content. Uh, in our network, of course, there is a secure and powerful available uh, node where we have a privileges to run our backend with write with, with writing. And on this node, we're able to send transaction and modify content. And by the way, we could switch it off, this node off, and no problems for our users. Content will, will be still available via local copy on real node. So, uh, this is term of quick start. For example, we have Rakudo Star bundle on our on our workstation. We have pre-installed Metaterium. We creating some minimalistic minimalistic model like HH minimalistic. Run some code for implement a few methods for data managing or creating a REST API library, and as a result, we got a secure and decentralized held this CMS. We don't need to store password. We don't, we don't think, uh, need to think about sessions, manage roles, uh, all the things that every CMS has built in, every back backend has a modulus, has a components uh, that provided these features. We using the main features of blockchain nodes. We're using the providing features, the features that blockchain nodes providing. And that's why it's a good quick start. It's a good quick start for our CMSs, for our secured CMSs. Uh, we have a legacy demo backend application prototype available at a link presented on the slide. Uh, and what the benefits of this uh, way of this, of this CMS? First of all, our data is encrypted. Our data is distributed and we have no centralized server. If one node go down, network will be still alive. Uh, we have a high, key, high high level of encryption with a private case and each, each member has own private case. So when one, mem one network member will be hacked, it's no problem. For example, if hacker get a um, K of a uh, node with a writing privileges, no matter you, if the, he will corrupt data or falsify data, but it's stored in new blocks and chain and you can use some comparisons or deep data analysis to understand what the fake data, what data is, what, what is the true data. Of course, you can check the hacker attack on the logs and Chain provides timestamping overall data changes, and you and, and if you can 
identify abnormal activity on your server, you just mark chain segment and as potentially falsified. And in future, you could skip it or use with uh, some restrictions, I think. Uh, okay, maybe most of us don't want to use blockchain like uh, uh, only uh, database, like an only storage. And that way you should think about a hybrid data model. For example, uh, each CMS with blockchain, of course, should use regular databases and flat files. Uh, why blockchain is good? Because we should store uh, some uh, temper-proof data in blockchain, not strings, not text, just the vote results, rating, test marks, bug tracks, changes history, or other. Something not heavy, but something not, but something is very important. In flat database, we should use something um, regular, something uh, fat, something um, heavy, like uh, images, like a uh, big text, like uh, uh, I don't know, etc. In flat files, uh, flat files are, are useful in uh, devices with uh, low resources. For example, Internet of Things devices, I/O devices without a file system, without a file storages, just uh, RAMFS, and we sh we could use that uh, file system uh, operate some file system like a, uh, storages for. Um, data where flat file operation like read write something similar and of course to implement uh to working with uh, blockchain flat files and low resources we should keep in mind lazy techniques as i say about a few slides ago we should do not store all data in a one storage on one record we should divide it to parts. We should store each part with a efficient size. For example, 100 kilobytes of data should store in 25 frames and four kilobytes reading is very low costing. It could be performed in seconds. So no problem to store store kilobytes in blockchain, but we have a 25 records. And this way, we should use lazy textings, read one block, read next block, show the hyperlink or something other to read more this way. OK, uh, we are going to the finish. And I would uh, speak about what uh, has done already. Uh, we have a blockchain CMS on Raku in a private beta version. It named Fakes. It's available on URL that uh, I shown on the slide. My presentation is um, presenting from website. It's also from blockchain. It's also in blockchain now. And um, no, you, you could check content. It's, it's, it's not quite a, a lot of content on the site, but something interesting you could find there. Uh, OK. The, uh, architecture of this CMS is similar to what I speaking above. We have a hybrid data model, database model. We storing on blockchain low cost data and we have not trivial smart contract. Our private network consists of uh, four nodes. We have uh, four nodes or three nodes are permanent running. And one node is on my laptop. This is a master node. Uh, I mean, one of the no one of master node from where we could pushing transactions. Uh, on the other hand, we have a router, right? It's a URL, URL routing module. Uh, also was ported from Perl 5 router, right? Uh, it's very, very expressive module because it has a uh, interesting road handlers, for example, nested flow roads, regexps, and something other. Uh, 
nowadays I'm maintaining this package. I'm maintaining this module. It's well documented. Uh, all links, all links to the Git, uh, to the wiki on the slide. Uh, this is our current dependency list, dependencies list, and uh, that's uh, what I have said about a few slides ago when we spoken about the dependencies in Crow. Uh, 80 modules uh, versus uh, about 15 modules. Uh, and that's uh, the uh, report from WebRank, how our sites works. We see that we have quite, quite good performance, about 33 persons, about uh, as, as, uh, low accessibility, good practice, and full SEO support. Uh, low accessibility, I mean, zero in this uh, place, speed index, low speed index, and largest contentful paint. All the things are not uh, dealing with blockchain. Speed index, that's why we use external dependencies like uh, JS and style sheets. Largest content find, it's like uh, images, not compressed images. And accessibility, it's uh, bad content. Okay, on the slide, we see that we have no names for bottoms. We have uh, background and foreground colors, descending uh, handling. It, it, it's not a blockchain pro uh, issues. It's a just we should tune up our content. Uh, here is our roadmap for um, this year. We just passed Q1, Q2. We are on private beta, private beta release now, and uh, supposed to get a better public beta on October. Okay, uh, uh, quite finished. Uh, a summary. Uh, as I found out that the Raku is very friendly for Ethereum. Actually, everything we have needed to start developing is provided by Rakuda Star. Only net Ethereum module should be installed by Zev. It's not a problem. And when you downloading Rakuda Star, when deploying it to your workstation, downloading net Ethereum, and you have everything to start full purpose development. Okay, it's we have objective-oriented programming in Raku. We have fantastic syntax. We have built-in UTF. We have a big numbers uh, in language. We have JSON user agent provided by Raku Star. It's really fast start. Like uh, I, I, I should uh, compare it with JavaScript when we're using npm. For example, uh, uh, we are installing Node.js, and that's all in Node.js by default. But it's also by default in Raku, it's great. Also, I think it's just faster than Go or Rust languages. And on the other hand, fakes, the public uh, private demo fakes demonstrates that we really can implement more or less fast web CMS on blockchain with blockchain supports. And we have out of the box uh, ranking over 50 processes by performance. It's great for my thing. Okay, uh, I would like to invite all of you to develop processes. We need, I need code review, I need major requests. Uh, everything is welcome. If you're interested, uh, here are the links. If you want donate, please go to the section. And of course, I would. Uh, I I I know I know many of you dealing with Perl five. And on this open call, I calling for dealing with Raku because Raku is really, really, really a rule. Okay, that is the end, the final slide. Um, I would like to, I would like to thank all organizers. I would like to thank all people that create this conference possible, create this possible life for conference life. Also, I would like all attendees and thank you for attention. I would open for question.
Hi, this is Larry. Um, Hi. But I'm kind of wondering what um, what you had the monkey patch. Monkey patch? Sorry, sorry. What you uh, please repeat? What uh, wondering? What you wondering about? Just don't. You had a slide with uh, mon monkeying in there. I thought that was about monkey patching or monkey typing. No, 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 no. That was slide uh, slide about uh, coding. I mean that. Uh, just one one minute. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I think this slide you mean, yeah? Uh, it's a simple, uh, yeah, it's it's a code, uh, it, it, it's a very similar, a simple code, like a baby code, maybe. I think monkey coding when a program is to typing, typing a code like a, like a simple text. It means that the code is very simple. All, of, all, all you need is to create a few methods that uh, implementing REST API interaction and REST API, um, uh, REST API interaction and uh, method for data management. It, it, it's not something like uh, monkey test, uh, like something uh, uh, monkey mocking testing or something, or something other. Yeah. There are, there are not enough words in English for everything we need to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> 